When we talk about uh, the home building industry, as we learned with the housing crisis in, in America, with the housing bubble, um, it touches just every sector of the economy, doesn't it? That's why you would have such a diverse membership. Absolutely, it does. And of course, we've certainly seen that during this recession. Right. Um, normally, home building leads the country out of recession. This time it's been difficult because home building has lagged behind, and so that's, I think that's one of the reasons we've stayed deeper in than usual. Yeah. We're lucky to be in Texas, we're lucky to be in the Houston area sure. because it did not hit us as hard, although we still are only at about 60% of where we should be. Other parts of the country are only 30% of where they should be, or you know. So we we still are, we're lucky, but we're we're still going back, still yeah. getting back. And you know, you mentioned the recession. Technically, we're out of the recession, but tell that to people who don't have a job. Right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, isn't it interesting that you can have uh, a recession going on, you can have unemployment be very high, but at the same time, as you're hearing from some of your members, uh, you can't find people with the right skills to put in some jobs, right? So what's being done about that? And, and first, talk about what the situation is. I mean, there are uh, some of these trades where they just can't find enough people, right? That's correct. And of course, we've, we've seen that off and on, you know, through history, obviously. I've been with the association for 15 years, and, and I've seen times when we've had some labor shortages. One of the things that we believe has happened, and I think this has happened across the construction industry in general, not just residential, is that during the really slow times that we had, 2008, 9, 10, uh, a little bit in 11 as well, um, there was a sort of an out-migration of some of the folks who did a lot of the work on the actual job sites, people from Mexico and other places south of the border, they went back home because there wasn't a lot of work. Yeah. When our, when our um, building starts, home starts, fell to under 20,000 and, and further than that even, uh, there just wasn't a lot of work. So some people went home, so we saw an out-migration of of uh, folks who, immigrants who had been here and had been doing roofing and framing and bricklaying and foundation work and all those kinds of things that you have to have to build a home. So that's part of the problem. The other part of the problem is that we don't have uh, a lot of folks who are not immigrants but who are natural citizens of the United States. Uh, they're getting into the, the home building industry uh, in those positions, in those types of, of um, sort of semi-skilled and skilled labor, I guess is what you would call it. And so what we're trying to do is, is find um, organizations, um, community colleges, technical colleges, even high schools, and other groups that are working on training, finding and training folks mm -hmm. who would like to get into the home building industry. And it's not, you know, one of the, one of the challenges, of course, is uh, if you take especially a really young person, someone in high school, say, who's possibly going through some trades training of some sort, um, it's it's kind of hard to talk them into coming out in the heat of the <laughs> summer mm -hmm. and swinging a hammer when they might be able to flip burgers at McDonald's right. in McDonald's air conditioning. Sure. And so what we have to one of the challenges we have is showing the career path because they need to see that. Yeah, it may be hard right now, and you know you may choose to do that. Some people love doing that, but eventually you might be the boss. You might own this company. You might go to work for a builder. So um, showing that career path is part of what our challenge is. I think some, one of the things that we can help bring to the table as we uh, try to train folks at whatever stage life stage of their lives they're in that there 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 are career opportunities. Um, to back up a little bit, uh, you mentioned that there is a problem with trying to find some of these folks. Are your members telling you that there are uh, projects that are being slowed way down because of that? Are there some that they just can't do because of that? Is it, is it not quite to that point, but it at least is causing them to have some issues? It's slowdowns right mm -hmm. now, yeah. And I've heard it from large production builders, basically all the large production builders that you hear about. You know, if you mention Trendmaker or Weekly Homes or Lennar or any of those, they all are members here. But we also have a host of smaller builders and custom builders um, here as well. And I've heard it from the big ones and the little ones that they're having a hard time getting things scheduled because the way it works, of course, for a builder, they're the main contractor. And then what they do is they contract with independent contractors who do things like roofing, framing, uh, bricking, whatnot. And so it's those independent contractors are the ones that are having a hard time finding and keeping a, a workforce. So uh, what I heard is, yes, things are slowing down for them. They're having to wait on their independent contractors because they're having to share 
uh, people. Uh, interesting, just uh, a couple of days ago, we have a charity called Homemade Houston, which is uh, an organization that helps build housing for transitionally homeless folks, mainly women and children. And we even heard that one of our homemade projects is, has slowed down because our builder captain can't get all the independent contractors really? that he needs to do the work on time. So it's taking longer than usual. And you mentioned some of the solutions on this. You're trying to work with community colleges, trying to get uh, people into these trades. Uh, is there also an issue with our uh, with our education system, uh, not just in Texas, but in general, that doesn't emphasize the skilled trades at all and sort of sends, says everybody needs to go to college for your degree no matter what? Yes, I think so. We've said that for a long time. and, and you know, we. This has always been an issue for us, just trying to get people into the business. Uh, and like I said, it's kind of gone up and down, up and down. And we um, have had have made attempts in the past at, at uh, bringing folks in, and it took had limited success. And that is definitely part of the reason now, because it, you know we're in a high tech world, and um, for even for folks who are not being pushed to, uh, to be college bound. They're being they're they're being pushed more or, or it's more appealing to them possibly to go into technical training where it's you know computer based technology based right. and so there has whereas you, you used to see in high schools and in, and in trade schools you know folks were learning mechanics <laughs> right. and um, woodworking uh, you know that type of thing. You just don't see that very much anymore. Yeah, I had uh, someone who runs a, a shop who's looking for 80 mechanics. He's had the, the jobs open for a year and cannot fill them. Right. And that's, that's more exactly and more technical. It. That is exactly right. Well, what do you think about um, going forward and trying to present that as an option to people? It's not that you want to force people to do that at all, but, no. but it just seems that right now it's just not an option. It's not even something that people think of. That That's very true. And again, I think part of that has to be. Um, that we, we partnering with the uh, educational institutions have to be able to show these young folks that this this is a career opportunity. Mm -hmm. This is not just a summer job or something to get you by till something else comes along. If you're actually interested in the home building industry, remodeling or developing whatever it happens to be, that there is a way to, to get there and if you're not college bound, and you're not going to go to Texas A&M and get a construction management degree, for instance. Yeah. That this is a way to get into the industry and uh, have, make a have a nice career, you know, support your family, have a nice life. And so, uh, I think part of that is our responsibility, so, so, because we can take people who've been through it and say, I'm an example. I'm an example of someone who started out, you know, framing or roofing or laying bricks or whatever I did, and I've worked my way up, and I'm now the division uh, president for David Weekly, or I'm the superintendent for Lenar Homes, or whatever it happens to be. All right. Toy yeah. thank you. Yeah, thank you. I appreciate it very much. This is a very timely and tough issue, mm -hmm. and uh, we really do look forward to partnering with folks to try to resolve it. We'll visit again. Okay, thank you.